Good evening and thank you for joining us here at the Carmody Center at Gonzaga College High School for the final afternoon of the DC Classic. Great basketball that supports good works. We have a great matchup in store tonight between Gonzaga College High School and St. Francis Academy. My name is Drew Winters and I'm joined today by John Ferrara. There are a lot of key storylines in this game, aren't there, John? Oh, absolutely, Drew. I mean, if you look at it just on paper, both teams are nationally ranked. St. Francis and Gonzaga both are near or around the top 15 in the country according to Max Preps. Um, they're used to expectations, and tonight there will certainly be some, as there are many regional scouts in the area, including Georgetown and other high-level D1 programs. Um, and, you know, both the Eagles and the Black Panthers are headlined by star players, D1 guys. You look at the uh, St. Francis guys, they got Jonathan Lamoth, who leads their squad, a four-star guard. Um, and meanwhile, Gonzaga has guys like Devin Dinkins, Jared Turner, both D1 commits um, to lead their guys. And so there's going to be lots of scoring. Both teams average close to 80 points a game, and that's a lar in large part thanks to such good players. And then finally, we have both teams that play really aggressive basketball. I mean, before the game, St. Francis even said they like to play aggressive and high tempo, so we'll see how that goes tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, our national anthem. What? 
Nitro. It's going to be headlined by a lot of talent. Uh, specifically on the St. Francis Academy side, a lot of really good guard play. Um, they love their guys in Daquan Davis and Jonathan Lamoth, um, both of whom uh, are ranked. Jonathan Lamoth especially is a four-star guard. Um, and so it's going to be really great seeing that these guys go you know, face-to-face like Devin Dickens versus the Lamont in a very popular match for sure, um, as well as some other uh, fast-paced defense. Uh, in, the, in the game, St. Francis has said that they want to play aggressive, that they want to move fast on offense and on defense, and I think we're going to get just that as we head into tonight. Right, Drew? Absolutely. Two nationally ranked teams. We're going to have a lot of individual offense, but a lot of team basketball more than anything. It, you don't become a nationally ranked team, nationally regarded team, by playing as individuals. These teams play as teams. They know each other. They've played together for years. It's going to be a great night, night of basketball. Absolutely, and I can't wait for it. Here's the intro to the starters. starting lineups. An interesting choice here by Coach Turner starting Nicholas Lewis, a freshman for the Eagles. Um, you know, obviously Gonzaga has a lot of guard depth. I'm sure that we'll see a fair amount of Eddie Paquette tonight, a Swarthmore commit who's a guard that'll sit right behind Lewis on the depth chart for tonight. And it'll be a really great battle overall between all of these, you know, fast, quick, great shooting, great passing players. Lewis starting here is not that surprising considering how well he's played in this tournament. He's usually early off the bench. But now starting, not a surprise to see. Absolutely. We know that everyone on this Gonzaga you know, team is highly qualified, highly skilled. And you know you can see anyone in the game and they'll play well. Absolutely. St. Francis wins the tip here, starting up their offense. We have Davis bringing up the ball, passing outside. Setting up their offense on the perimeter, passing around. Not too much dribbling going on, a lot of motion basketball, keeping the ball moving. Find a little bit of an opening, deep three is just off. Quinn Clark comes down with the board, and Lewis is now pushing the pace on offense. Great That's pass. Great pass. Oh, oh and a great block. defensive play. The recovery on that was great. St. Francis now setting their own pace, have it in the corner, slowing it down, setting up their offense here. We have Lindsay with the ball here. Taking it himself, creating his own shot, missing on the jumper. That's good nice defense move. by the Northeastern commit, Jared Turner on that one. Lewis now keeping the ball himself, giving that off to Turner. Turner has it at the top of the free throw line. Clark takes it, kicks it out. Batties takes it. So good luck oh, and just off. Nice move, but the ball does not take a nice roll for him. Passes it. This is Jonathan Lamuth. St. Francis passes it around, and they miss the shot. But great offensive play there, so on the last creating a good shot. On that last position, you saw Jonathan Lamuth there with the shot. He is one of their best players. That is oh, a, and a great shot. Oh, Turner, I mean, Turner with a deep three there, off the sidestep. 
Great move there. Rises up 6'8 height. Not much you can do about that as a defender. No, not to make him so lethal. He's that tall and can shoot that far away. Good luck. St. Francis moving the ball around. Gets it inside. Lamuth with a, or that was Johnson there. It was Johnson there with a nice play under the basket. So you'll see St. Francis is already pressuring on this inbound. That's they how it's going to be all year. Or all game, pardon me. Lewis is taking it down the floor. Turner with it outside. Slowing down the offense. Clark with it to Dinkins. Dinkins getting double teamed. Tip pass goes to a steal to St. Francis, taking it their own way. Attacks the basket, kicks it out to the corner. Oh, Three -pointers tough good. shot. Good shot there by Davis. That's got Daquan Davis, one of their main guards, fired up. Gonzaga passes out of the press. Lewis has it here, loses the ball. Clark has it outside. Back to Turner up top. He's looking for help. St. Francis is playing a very aggressive defense right now. Lewis is, shot clock oh, is a down. deep three there. Oh, and it's good. With a second on the shot clock left, great shot. Great confidence there by Lewis, taking it himself, saw, shot, saw the low shot clock, and took it himself, made the three. You can hear the crowd say it, he's a freshman. Clark playing good defense down low, good forces the miss. Dinkins has it in the corner off of Lewis's pass. Dinkins has it near half court, orchestrating Gonzaga's offense. Turner now has it to Clark. They call a travel, call a travel on, on it on Clark when he was attacking the baseline. So you see one of the biggest, biggest uh, advantages for Gonzaga in this game is their student section. Kind of a you know unique element of the DC Classic being played on Gonzaga's home court. They'll get all the support they need from the fans tonight. Lindsay with the pass. Good oh, that's Lamuth. Good find there. That's St. Francis' best player, and they've got to guard him tight, or else he'll do that to them all game. Turner taking it himself, trying to create. Gets stopped up. Dinkins with it near half court. He's trying to look where Dinkins he goes. Dinkins trying to shake his defender. Back to Lewis on the other side. Lewis now moving. A couple of hesitations there. D3 Deep. by Turner. Oh, oh it almost out. goes in. It'll stay with Gonzaga. Stays with Gonzaga. Wow. It's a good shot. You'll see on the sidelines the difference in demeanor. Turner now inbounding it quick to Clark. Oh. Staying with Gonzaga again. You'll see the difference in demeanor here on the sidelines. You've got coach Steve Turner for Gonzaga, this is what, calm and composed, and in an opposing style, coach Nicholas Miles is a little bit more fired up. Turner with a nice pass to Baddies. Oh, off of Clark's leg. Looks like Clark trying and Baddies are trying inside. to figure it out together. What went wrong? Lindsey and Davis bringing up the ball for St. Francis. Moving the ball around the perimeter. Lamoth with it, taking it himself. Off the dribble, loses it. Going in Zaga's way. Good defense by Baddies there. The turn will get this inbound here. And this is always tough to play against early in the game. You get a full court press team like this. The Black Panthers are tough to breakthrough. That's just the high intensity that this whole game will have. Finds Lewis open. Makes a nice wraparound layup, but he misses. Going St. Francis's way. Now, we'll move oh! The oh, Turner with the block. Tough block by Jared Turner. The Northeastern commits six foot eight. Great step up there on defense and the recovery of that. That would have been an easy two points there. He's fired up. Johnson outside, passes it inside. Stops the fadeaway again. there by Car Carrington. Lewis now with it for Gonzaga. Back to Turner there. Turner top. is such a good all-around player, and that's what he, he's a good scorer and good defender. Clark out to Turner. Turner back out to Dinkins. Has it near half court. To Lewis on the right side. 
to Baddies. Back to Clark down low, doing some spin moves. I think he got touched up there a little bit. But St. Francis is taking their way. And they score on transition there, converting. Good defense into good offense there. Devin Dinkins now setting up Gonzaga's offense. Takes a sidestep, misses, but Clark follows up with the rebound and scores. Second chance wall. opportunities like that are going to be huge this game. Quinn Clark is one of the four seniors that starts, or sorry, three seniors that's starting tonight for Gonzaga. St. Francis setting up their offense. Lamoth has it outside. To Lindsay, deep three, misses. They get their own re they get their rebound and they follow up. Carrington, second Tough. second possession with the second chance opportunity that they scored. Those those possessions are huge. Coach Turner's a little disappointed in his team for not getting that offensive rebound. Both these teams need to box out on the defensive side of the ball, not allowing second chance opportunities. Dingens with it outside, getting doubled, trying to find some help. Timeout called by Coach Steve Turner. A lot of high-intensity basketball here tonight, John. Oh, you bet. You know, Gonzaga's down by four points, and it wouldn't surprise me if Gonzaga was up by four points. These teams are switching back and forth so fast. Uh, they play the ball so hard. You see high intensity on both squads, right? Uh, St. Francis' bench is their coach. Coach uh, Nicholas Miles is fired up. They're pacing their own sideline. Meanwhile, the Gonzaga student section, Steve Turner, the Gonzaga bench, is right up there too. So high-energy game. Off the start, I'm sure it'll remain that way throughout the rest of the game. And it'll be interesting to see uh, who pulls ahead by the end of the first quarter. A lot of three-point shots already taken. So that'll be a big thing in this game. If those three-point shots fall, it will force these defenses to step out. And then we'll create more offense for the rest of the team on the inside. Right. And you saw Jared Turner was really, has really been a uh, key piece of this Gonzaga offense and defense um, through the first part of the first quarter. As for St. Francis, Davis, Lindsay, and Lamoth, Lamuth, are all going to be big attackers on their offense. Dingens taking it, passes outside. Dingens gets it back. At the end of the shot clock, gets it off, but he misses the three. St. Francis taking it. Carrington with the ball, bringing up, playing point guard for St. Francis now. Mid-range jumper, he rises up, but he misses. Gonzaga comes up with the rebound. Baddies is taking to himself, the big getting man. doubled. Oh, good pass. Finds a man, great pass. Open Turner three. open in the corner, oh. just short. Good oh. rebound. Great rebound by Quinn Clark. Takes it out of his hands and then draws a foul. You know, that's that's, a, a, that's, that's a, a second offensive rebound for Clark this game. That's a rare miss by Turner. He will not miss those open threes much more than that. And those second chance opportunities are going to be huge this game. Absolutely. High intensity defense, high intensity, high intensity rebounding, and a lot of effort for those loose balls. For sure. Dinkins gets it outside. You know, Dinkins needs to be more, a little bit more productive so far this game. He hasn't had a lot of points yet either. The or floater assists. just ended up just short. St. Francis now on the attack. Lamuth makes his layup in transition. Gonzaga now, Devin Dinkins playing point guard for them. Offense is moving around, setting picks. Turner gets it outside, Consider makes a it. nice pass, and the foul called. Yeah, Turner considers shooting that three for a second, chose not to pass inside, and now Gonzaga's going to go to the charity stripe. That was Holmes there, is now at the free throw line for two. Just about 12.6 seconds left, as you can see, in the first quarter. St. Francis is up by six points. With a couple makes here, they can cut this lead down to four. 12 seconds left in this first quarter. Probably one more possession. Last to back. The first one's good, going to the second at the line for Holmes. The second one's short. St. Francis comes up with the rebound. Only a couple seconds left in the quarter. Find it, try to get it inside. It's tipped. Staying with St. Francis. Which is about four, four seconds, seconds left. On the clock here, yep. Likely to be one more shot. Let's see who they go to. I think it's going to go to uh, 
I think Janino Lamuth, he's their main guy. I wouldn't I would be I would not be surprised at the pick play or a mid-range jumper by Lamuth. Let's see what they do. Gonzaga student section getting excited. They do go to Lamuth just short. Turner heaves it and it misses to end the first quarter. First quarter ends, Gonzaga 9, St. Francis Academy 14. Right. Um, you know, that was a really interesting first quarter for a lot of reasons. First of all, Devin Dinkins, one of Gonzaga's main players, primary players, I don't think had any production um, in terms of on the offensive side of the ball. I don't think he scored any points, got any rebounds or assists. But, you know, his presence has felt on the defensive end, and I'm sure it's going to pick up throughout the rest of this game. Um, on the flip side of that, uh, you know, St. Francis Academy's biggest guard, Lamuth, um, put up a couple of good shots, missed that one at the end there. Uh, but overall has been, you know, really playing really well. And then, of course, Jared Turner has been standing out on both defense and offense. So we'll see how this goes. Both teams have been good at getting their offensive rebounds. I think that's a theme that will continue throughout the night. Um, they play physical and they play fast. And they don't give up on plays, which is going to result in a lot more rebounding than you might see in a typical game. So far, both teams have had their offense built around the outside scoring. I think I want to see both these teams try to work the ball inside, get to the line, and Absolutely. see how that works out for them. Attack on multiple layers you of know, this game. For sure. I mean, the Panthers, for instance, have Cortez Johnson, a uh, 6'7 guy. The Eagles obviously have Quinn Clark and uh, Thomas Batty's two big guys. There's plenty of uh, size for you know the ball to be down low and be in the post, so it'll be interesting to see how that uh, develops. Absolutely. It'll be an exciting game. Still, still a two-possession game. Two possession, yeah, it's close, obviously. Not too much scoring in this first quarter. No, not a lot, which is interesting because both of these teams actually average close to 80 points per game through their uh, competitions this season. So really off-brand basketball for all of them. Now Clark taking to himself. Oh, goes up strong with the layup. Finishes with the right hand. Good play producing for himself from the top of the free throw line to get into the basket. Lindsay with it near half court. Taking this defender, goes left, gets caught up at the near the baseline, and Clark tips it out of bounds. It's going to stay with St. Francis. Good defense there by Gonzaga. So the subs are going to come in now as uh, Burt Carroll, or sorry, not Burt Carroll, my bad. Tyler Jackson will check in for the Panthers. Good defense on the inbound, but they get it back. Ooh, Ooh a contact tough finish fall. there. Does not go in, and he will be going to the line. Looks like tough Qu finish there. Quinn Clark might have thought it could have been a charge, but uh, either way, good way to stop a easy two points. Otherwise, those are always tough to call in those quick possessions. Yeah, and I think typically it'll go to the offensive player. It'll be a block in most cases. The difference between a block and a charge is only point whatever of a yeah, second. Yeah, just so. setting your feet is really all that makes the difference. And. The refs will typically uh, take the offensive player aside. You can see that student section going nuts in the back. The it second works. free throw is not in. Ooh. St. Francis wow. reaches in off of the So they're going to charge Daquan Davis, one of their main guards. St. Francis guards with a foul. Davis can't believe it. I think he Davis thought it was going to be not happy strip. about that call. They have three defenders in front of half court playing this press defense. Let's see how they break it. Clark's coming down and receives the inbound. Gives it up to Dinkins. I think they're gonna live, give off a little bit of pressure, and they don't. They break the press with a pass, get it to the corner. Now. Clark takes it inside himself. He falls, loses the ball, and it's going St. Francis' way. Let's see if they can take advantage oh, of Oh, good strip oh, it's by steal. Turner. Tipped That's a out. savvy play. Two, two on one, ooh, and he gets fouled. That'll be Justin Gilmore going to the line. That is why Turner is such a sought-after sought prospect going to Northeastern. He can do it all. I mean, that type of awareness, basketball IQ, is not super common in high school players to reach around someone like that and tip it off their hand. That was a very heads-up play, tipping it out. And then now it's going to transition offense created for them. Right. Let's and an opportunity to cut this game to a, to a two-point game. Yeah. Looks like Coach Miles uh, for the Panthers is asking the ref what went wrong there on Jared's uh, strip, whether or not that might have been a reach. Gilmore converts on both free throws, now 13-15. Only a two-point lead for St. Francis. Davis with the ball. 
outside, trying to work a little bit. Good defense by Gonzaga, not giving him much room for anything. Turner sure. stepping out, Gilmore stepping out. Oh, nice move there, but it gets caught in the legs. To a loose ball down there. I think they're going to call a jump here. Let's see what they, who they give it to, what they call. Turner's egging the crowd on. And they're going to give it to, I think it's going to be St. Francis who's going to get the ball here. Those players on the ground, it's just a testament to the high intensity oh, basketball yeah, I mean, that's being played during this tournament. We've seen it in every game we've, we've watched today. No, absolutely. I mean, every, every player on this court knows the stakes are in this game. You know, national rankings, college commitments uh, on the table even. You know, they all want to leave it on the court. They want to impress um, and do the best they can for their team. Also considering the amount of seniors in this tournament. This is a lot yeah. of students' last tournament to play in this tournament. And the deep three is missed at the end of the shot clock. Gonzaga's taking it their own way. Playing this press defense throughout the court. Turner setting up the offense. A lot of double teams for St. Francis on offense or on defense. Turner taking himself near the baseline. Makes a nice pass. Loose ball. Gilmore has it. Oh, oh. nice jump step. Beautiful jump step, creating a left hand layup for himself. A beautiful play there. Wow. Off a loose ball, takes the opportunity and makes a play for himself. That's such a nasty move even as a sophomore to be able to do something like that. Stepping up on defense again. A nice move there. Thought oh. it got fouled and got the bucket. That's Lindsay Bryce Lindsay. That is a tough bucket. There was someone in his face through, coming from behind. Playing through the contact there. Wow. St. Francis is now up by three points. Dinkins has it near half court. Attacking the basket now. Caught up a little bit. There we go. Plays through the contact and is going to the line. Yeah, and that was, I mean, a perfect play to get Devin Dinkins involved in this game. So far through a you know, quarter and a half of play, Dinkins hasn't been a big factor. I'm sure that's going to start changing now as we uh, get closer into the second period, into halftime. Uh, you know, here's his opportunity for his first points of the game. Yeah, a, a very aggressive play there, taking it himself, getting to the line. As the first one misses... Dinkins uh, committed to George Mason University not too long ago. So he'll play there next year. The second free throw falls, making it 16-18. St. Francis is up. This is such great basketball, Drew, isn't it? Absolutely. So close, so high intensity. The fans are into it. Everyone is very exciting. You can hear the Gonzaga crowd from out Absolutely. here. Absolutely. Oh, oh, another... Oh, and he Locked, follows up his go shot. Through. Good offensive rebound, sticking in that play. Good play by St. Francis. Having a good defense there on the press. It looks like most of the Gonzaga players ran up court thinking that the ball was already going to be inbounded. They'll have to break this. Stifling St. Francis. Number 15, Robinson, Bro. getting his own rebound on that last possession. Great play there by, by him. Dinkins setting up the offense from half court. Gives it up to Turner. Turner to Batties, to Gilmore. Back to Turner, deep three, takes it. Just misses, but the confidence was there. St. Francis, oh! In transition, loses the ball out of bounds. The Gonzaga student section liked that quite a bit. Oh, of course. It's hard not to celebrate an environment like this. Dinkins breaking the press with his dribble. Looks like Dinkins is actually waving off a couple of Gonzaga players. He's trying to lead the floor. The off-ball movement by both these teams has been amazing this game. Now another double team by St. Francis. He's in trouble. Dinkins. And that, that turns into a turnover and a fast break opportunity for St. Francis. That's great defense Contact by finish. Turner. Another oh, great oh. block there by Batties. Gilmore with it, pushing it down floor. Three men on that side of the court. And he wow, finishes. That is Talk so impressive. There. What a phenomenal defensive series by Gonzaga. Getting back on defense, a block, and then another block. Corrington here for St. Francis. Gives it up. 
Lindsay with it outside. He scored quite a bit this quarter. Attacking the basket. Oh, the sidestep on the jumper, and it's wow. good. With two men on him, still converted that. Cortez Johnson there, a very nice shot, rising up on his defender. The 6'7 senior, that's one of his skill sets right there. Gilmore gets fouled on the floor. He's going to stay with Gonzaga. So they're going to bring Brack back in Quinn Clark to give Turner a rest. Probably a good idea. Turner's been playing so hard, so physical. Wouldn't hurt for him to sit out maybe the rest of the half for a couple minutes even. Absolutely. Lewis coming back in. One of their primary ball handlers. The ball goes to Batty's near the corner. Picks up his dribble, passes to Dinkins, setting up near half court. The offense moving off ball. Lewis gets it. Now attacking the basket. Passes it out, find an open man. Batty's open. Oh. He misses. Almost goes in. Oh, head nice. play there. That's Steal a phenomenal into the second effort there. Did not give up on that play at all. That's what makes this Gonzaga team number 18 in the country. They are relentless on the boards. St. Francis with a two-point lead. Carrington with the ball. Trying to find an opening in this defense. Give it to Lamuth. Oh, Dinkins with a physical play. Wow, Dinkins cannot believe that they called a foul on him for that. He's asking the referee what went wrong. He thought he got a clean strip on him. Raises his eyebrows at the ref. He's like, man, are you going to call Lamuth is me? going to the line here to extend this lead. With two minutes and 32 seconds left in the second quarter. The first one falls, extending this lead to three. The Gonzaga crowd does not distract him enough. <laughs> Makes the Clearly second free not. throw. Lewis bringing the ball down the court. Back to Clark. Gives it back to Lewis. Batty's with it. Back to Lewis. Not much is being given up here. Oh, the pick and roll to Batty's. Gets to the oh, back and the and tough one. finish. Wow. You know, what makes Gonzaga's offense so lethal is their pick and roll game. They use it all the time, whether it's working or not. Eventually, the defense has to break down, and they get some good inside looks. The physicality there was great, and the that shot was completely produced by off-ball movement. Exactly. Something Coach Turner puts a very big emphasis on. So now Turner's going to check back into the game for the last two minutes of the half after sitting out for about a minute or so. Converts the free throw, making it a three-point possession. St. Francis only up one now. Lindsay bringing the ball up the court. Gives it up. Oh, nice pass there by Lamuth. Oh, they're gonna give it to Gonzaga. They're calling it a travel. Johnson with the turnover there near the basket. Turner passes it down the court, gets it back. Good ball handler. Get it stuck a little bit in the corner, trying to find someone. Gives it up to Clark. Clark has it down low, gives it back to Turner. A little bit of space, finds Batty's nice pass. Wow, Turner had an open three there, passed on it, and dished it down low. Very heads up pass there though. Could have produced an easy two points, but good defense by St. Francis. Clark to, to Turner. Dinkins with it up top. Oh, a little bit of a miscommunication hitting Batty's foot. And then a foul called immediately after. You know, something interesting about Gonzaga's offense is how little motion you actually see, especially in that last series, right? They're pretty static, and the ball handler, typically Devin Dinkins, you know, directs them at his will, but they don't move a lot on their own. 
that's really a result of Dinkins' high, you know, basketball IQ and ability to create plays on his own. So we'll interesting to see if they keep with that strategy throughout the night. Interesting to see Gonzaga putting so much pressure on the ball this far away from the basket. Good defense is getting played right here. Lamuth trying to create something. Deep, deep three, and oh, it's good. And a splash. We do Bryce know Lindsay we has made do a know Lindsay has already. that type of range. So they have to close out on shots like that. Lewis taking it himself, trying to answer. Oh, nice pass. Oh, and Clark almost finishes there. Nice pass there, though, by Lewis. Finding Clark on the baseline. Oh, Lindsay loses the ball. Lewis gets it and then gets fouled immediately. It was a good foul, honestly, because Turner was ready to jam that thing into the hoop when he got the ball on the fast break. Prevented the easy two points there. Probably a pretty smart foul there. Mm -hmm. Gonzaga in the bonus now. 40 seconds left in the second. Will be a one and one for Lewis. Custis lead to three. Now we'll get the second free throw because he made the first. Oh, and the second one does not get the roll. Look at how relentless Jared is. Reaching around every player's back when he has the chance to get a steal. Look at that! Oh, <laughs> he called I, it. I uh, might have uh, called that one into action. Look, wow. Oh, and they Lamuth call the back court. cannot believe it. They call the back court. Look at Turner. Jared's He's asking talking. for the ball. Jared's talking to him. The chippiness is setting in early here in the Carmody Center. The crowd loves this. The crowd wants a technical foul on Lamuth. And a Look at this, even Coach Miles Francis. is on the court in the paint. A lot Asking of the ref, why is there no, why is that a foul? You can't a believe it. A lot of talking going on right now. Wow, well, what an incredible first half. I mean, the defense of Turner specifically has been so impressive. The way that he's just insisted on stealing that ball out of the Panthers players' hands. But meanwhile, you've got guys like Bryce Lindsey who are not afraid to take these deep shots, and they're making them. It's really incredible. And, you know, the fans and this atmosphere, I think it's only going to continue to build. But just as an indication of what we just saw, the, you know, tension, the chippiness, setting in a little bit more. So much intensity coming from the crowds, coming from the players. This buildup of this weekend is all coming down to this game. 30 seconds left in the second half, second quarter. A lot more basketball to play. A lot more basketball to play. I think, honestly, what we're about to see is uh, an a attempt from Gonzaga to try to get close to the last shot. I suspect they're not going to rush too much unless they see a good look here. No, they definitely won't. Lewis so, handling the ball around half court. St. Francis certainly isn't going to give him Clark setting a shot. pick for him. Lewis attacking the basket. Oh, rises up for the jumper. Great shot there. Oh! oh Turner with the steal. Nice pass to Clark. Wow, wow, look at Turner. He's jumping up and down. He can't believe himself. Two points created off of heads-up play off the inbound right after the basket. Gonzaga now taking the lead, 28-27. Last second shot is not good off Jared the Jared Turner, Turner is amping is up this crowd. He's giving them hugs. He's high-fiving them. Oh, my goodness. He's playing out of his mind. That is a big momentum swing going into half. So Gonzaga, out of nowhere, Takes his lead after being down by four to six points. With takes about the lead for the first time, I think. Left. Oh, my goodness. Takes the lead for the first time, I think, since the first quarter. Oh, yeah, I think you're right there, Drew. I mean, wow. What an incredible finish to that first half. Very, very, very high intensity. High amount of emotions from both teams. And great basketball. Oh, phenomenal basketball. I think that what we're seeing here is a culmination of a Gonzaga team that in the past few years um, has obviously been stout, but has not been at the national scale like they are right now. And what you're seeing are these seniors, Jared Turner, Devin Dinkins, you know, Quinn Clark, putting everything they have on the line here, defensive effort, offensive hustle, to score buckets and get their team in a position to win and keep moving up that national scoreboard. Absolutely. There is a lot in on this game. The finals of the DC Classic. Yep, and we're going to come back in a few minutes 
And we have a halftime presentation for the Pedro Arupe Award. And briefly, we just want to remind everyone watching what the DC Classic is all about, and that's service. The saying of the Classic is great basketball that supports good works, and that's exactly what this event does, with all money raised being donated to good causes. And we want to give one final thank you to uh, the sponsors of this, of this great tournament for everything they've helped us put together and really enabling these games, these great games to happen. Good evening. In 2007, the Gonzaga College of Public established the Gonzaga DC Classic Pedro Rupe Award. This award recognizes the Gonzaga graduate who has lived his life in the service of others and meets the standard of being a man for others. The Gonzaga College Club and the DC Classic Tournament Committee are proud to present the 2021 Pedro Rupe Service Award to Conrad Sink.
Great first half. What do you think each team's going to have to do to take control of this game offensively in the second half? Right, Drew. So, you know, going into the third quarter, both teams right around 30 points total scored. Um, and that's totally a change of shift from what they're normally at. Right, St. Francis averages about 80 points a game. Gonzaga right around 77. Um, and that is in large part the reason they've been so stifled offensively on both ends of the ball is because of how well these defensive guys are playing. And to change that... I think the San Francisco needs to lean a little bit more on their guards, and Gonzaga needs to lean a little bit more on their guards as well, trying to get Devin Dinkins a little bit more involved. A turnover for Gonzaga here. Ball's going to St. Francis now. We've got Davis bringing up the ball for them. One of their big scorers, big ball handlers. Lamuth to... Oh! Deep three there by Lindsay. We know we can. He can hit those. Yeah, that's so. a rare miss for Lindsay and Gonzaga. Better count themselves lucky for that one. A little too much space was given there. Ball's gonna stay with St. Francis. 
Lamuth is inbounding this one here. He's having a hard time finding someone to pass into. He finds Johnson who gives it up to Lindsay. With Lewis on him, he's trying to find some space to work with. Finds Davis from deep. He misses Tough right, miss. but an offensive rebound. Davis takes it to the cup. I see a block Goes there, up I strong. Think. Clark pulls up his dribble and gives up the ball to Dinkins. Dinkins to Clark. Back to Dinkins. Dinkins takes it to the cup. Nice pass there to Baddies, but Looks it does not go in. Looks like there was a ton of contact on both of those kind of shots there. A travel here with good defense by Dinkins. I think Dinkins was a little frustrated on that last one. He didn't get called. They didn't call a foul on his the contact he drew, and then Baddies also kind of got a hit when he was going up for a shot. But great work by Dinkins by sticking in that play and causing the turnover. Clark with the ball, off the inbound, back to Turner, the inbounder, gives That's it to Dinkins on the, on the side. Dinkins with it to Turner. Turner's trying to find some space. Gives it to Clark. Clark passes to Baddies, moving near the basket. He misses, follows it up, gets his own rebound. Wow, so look at that. He's getting his own rebound. And now, and now it looks like there might be, Batty's going to go to the line. So we think can extend their lead here to up to three. Batiste misses this first at the line. Gonzaga now up one, 28-27 with 6.33 left in the third. The second misses. The student, the student section is not too happy about that. Davis bringing up the ball there, point guard. Dinkins staying with him. Davis finds a little space for himself. Passes it inside. Johnson takes it, oh, loses Turner's it. Turner's going to push this Turner's one. pushing the pace. Finds Clark on the inside who gets blocked, follows it, gets his own board. And then misses, oh, takes again. the ball out of his hands. Look at the Great effort. Great play by Clark, staying with it multiple times. You can't teach that. Going from a block to a turnover, following it up, stealing it, and now getting to the line. Man, Cortez Johnson, the six foot seven senior for the Panthers, cannot believe that Clark got all of those rebounds. Gonzaga multiple times on change in possession, played heads up defense and got a steal, got, got the ball in positions that would normally be it's a regular St. Francis possession. In, in this sort of game, that's what's going to make the difference, those hustle plays. Clark makes the first free throw, extending the lead to two. And drains the second. Gonzaga now leading 30 to 27, with a little over six minutes left in the third quarter. St. Francis sees some space down low and finds Cortez Johnson getting a basket. So Coach Miles sprinted up the court, calling a timeout. Clearly wanted to reset something before they got, but Gonzaga got the ball back. So, so far today we've seen a couple of great games. First of all, uh, and Drew, you were on this one, St. John's Catholic Prep eked out a win over Friendship Tech with a buzzer beater. That was a great one. An amazing game yeah. with an amazing finish. A, a almost half court shot to end the game, winning 58-57. Right, and then the 2.15 p.m. game, we saw St. Andrews Episcopal run away from Coolidge in the second half and take away that fifth and sixth place game. And then Charlotte Christian just recently lost to St. Andrews Episcopal in the third place game. Gonzaga now bringing out the ball. Devin Dinkins with it, dribbling his way to half court. Dinkins giving it up to Turner. Turner has it outside. Batty's coming up for the Five pick. Seconds on the shot He's clock rolling, here. he gets the ball, kicks it out, finds Clark open. A nice looking three, just a little short. St. Francis now in transition. Finds the open man, Lamuth finishes with the right hand. Nice pass there by St. Francis. Lewis now pushing the ball forward. Batty's with a little bit of space. Lewis is slowing it down near the three point line. Kicks out to Turner, too much space given for him. Oh, oh and it in almost and out. goes in. 
Lewis follows up the rebound and now gets to the line. Man. That, those are those second chance these, opportunities there. These Eagles are relentless on the boards. And these, this is a product of Coach Turner's in his 18th season as Gonzaga's head coach, training his guys to hustle and to get these offensive rebounds because they make the difference in the game. The first three throw, free throw falls, tying up the game with five minutes left in the third quarter. These are opportunities that they create for themselves. Oh, absolutely, and you have to respect it. And I'm sure that everyone in attendance is realizing what we're talking about right now, Drew, how dominant Gonzaga is on the offensive board. And the second free throw falls, taking back the lead, 32-31. Lindsey bringing up the ball for the Panthers. Carrington with it. Oh, they're trying to get the ball Some away Some good him. defense by the Eagles here. Jared Turner sticking with his man. Good defense, but he rises up. And the mid-range jumper takes a high bounce and doesn't fall in. Dinkins gets fouled by Carrington on the floor near half court. Carrington's not too happy about that one. You know, Robinson just came in for the Panthers, a high-energy player for them who had a big contribution in the second quarter. You know, we don't have these stat capabilities, Drew, but if only we could see the amount of lead changes there have been so far in this game, oh, it would be astronomical. I mean, Gonzaga's up by one right now, but just as easily San Francisco could go down the court and change the lead again. And that's been the story of tonight. Neither team has given up, and both teams are battling back and forth. Yes, definitely. No, neither team has been able to pull away so far. With four minutes, 50 seconds left in the third, Gonzaga's here to inbound. Dinkins gets it behind half court. It's a risky pass there. Davis keeping the pressure on him near half court. Dinkins finds Clark near the three-point line. Clark's getting some pressure on him. Lewis trying to get his defender off him. Sidesteps near the corner and misses. The ball is going St. Francis's way. Good defense there by St. Francis, forcing a pretty tough shot there. Davis and Lindsey here bringing up the ball. Lindsey with it right now. A nice move there to get some space. The foul on the floor is going to have an inbound for St. Francis under the basket. That's a tough foul. Looked like a little bit like Lemuth might have lost his possession there and just kind of, you know, the ball ran away from him. Lemuth inbounds it to Johnson here. Gives it up to Robinson. Lemuth gets it again, gets it to Robinson down low. Back out to back out to Lindsay. Misses his shot. Gonzaga gets the rebound. Turner with it. Turner looking to pass. No, he breaks it with his dribble and then gets the ball tipped away from him. Gonzaga keeps it, though. Man, Another loose ball. St. Francis now has it, pushing the pace. Lamuth with it in the corner, rises up, takes it. The three's just short. Gonzaga now in transition. Turner with it. Good pass. Lewis, cross-court pass, then to Dinkins deep. Goes off left. Lewis follows it up. Look at that. Up. The offensive wow. rebounds are unstoppable for Gonzaga. Lewis was everywhere on that possession. Lindsay now bringing up the ball for St. Francis. Gives it up to Lamuth. Robinson with it to Johnson down low. Oh, oh, what a slam. The exclamation point on the dunk there. Great pass finding him down low. Lewis breaking the press with his dribble there. Clark with it outside, Lamuth on him. Gonzaga's trying to find some space here. Ooh, Ooh tough take tough there. tough rejection there. Rejected there by Johnson. San Francisco now in transition. Oh! Oh, and yeah. they call it a charge. Look at Turner nodding his head. He wants it from the crowd. He's talking to Lamuth. He was set there. A very high IQ play, getting into his position and getting ready and taking it. Look, I'm not surprised. Turner's dad, Coach Turner, 400 wins on Friday. These basketball is in this guy's blood, and he knows it. 
Lewis bringing the ball down. We got Lindsay on him. Batty setting the pick for Lewis. Lewis getting caught up, gives it up to Batty's. Lamuth tried to draw a, a charge contact. again and gets fouled at the rim. Batty's is going to the line here for two. So look at this, not even, you know, a little over halfway into the third quarter, and St. Francis is only one foul away from putting Gonzaga into the bonus. That's something we definitely need to pay attention to so early in the third quarter. Absolutely. Now it looks like Lamuth is going to check out of this game in favor of Carlton, Carlton Carrington. That's a tongue twister. The lead is now three for Gonzaga. Lindsay with the ball. Believe it or not, this might be the biggest <laughs> lead of the game for Gonzaga. That's how close this competition has been. Johnson with it outside, tries to find Lindsay down low. Foul called on the floor on Gilmore. Carrington down low to inbound. Finds Lindsay down low, ooh. That's a, that's a pretty high IQ play to be honest. That was a very nice constructive play. Lindsay rose up and made the floater off the inbound. Gilmore with it outside. Finds Dinkins near half court. Dinkins getting, getting, getting doubled now. Wow, he's getting called Gets for a travel. travel on him. That has been an issue for Gonzaga so far in this game. Dinkins seems to be getting doubled a fair amount, and when that happens, they tend, Gonzaga tends to turn the ball over, get called for a travel, or just make bad decisions overall. Great defense there by Davis, and Johnson stepping up on D, forcing that tur turnover. Johnson, Lindsay again down low. Gilmore oh, with the block. block but oh, a but, chance. but Lindsay follows his shot and makes the basket. Those are their second chance opportunities. Wow. Oh, and the offensive foul off ball called on Devin Dinkins. You have to wonder if that's a little bit of Dinkins' frustration boiling over from the last play when he got called for that traveling, getting double teamed. Looked like he pushed the St. Francis player just before the play had started. Carrington into inbound for St. Francis. Lindsay with it near half court. Dinkins on him. This is a matchup we definitely need to watch out for the rest of this game. Oh, yeah. I mean, Dinkins is a relentless defender. He's definitely going to get to him. Shot clock Davis outside. Down here. Let's see seconds. what he can try to find. Oh, sidesteps on Clark. The three's just a little off. Turner comes up with the rebound. Turner takes it himself. Beats the press, gets to half court. Good defense there. Not a half, not a back court because of the tip. Finds Baddies down low, misses. Johnson comes up with the rebound, gives it up to Carrington, who now St. Francis finds down low. Wow, great and play there. Give him a one at the free throw line. Robinson with the end one finish there. Great find there for St. Francis. Turner is bent over on his knees. He can't believe the call. He thought he did it clean. Robinson going up strong there. That was a great possession there for St. Francis. Absolutely. And the free throw's off, not making a three-point possession. Clark gets the board. He takes it himself. He's pushing the pace. Attacks the basket, finds Baddies. Baddies kicks it out to Gilmore. Wow. Oh, and a travel the call. Travel. Man. Justin Gilmore cannot believe the call either. So that's two now in a row where the Eagles are a little confused about the referees officiating. 35 seconds left. Lindsay with the ball. St. Francis is up three, 39-36. Carrington with it outside. Gives it to Johnson. Finds Lindsay down low. And the end one call going up strong. Lindsay, a guard who's been attacking down low. They've been going to him again and again. Lindsay is so versatile. I mean, he has those two deep threes he made earlier in the game, and now he's torching the Eagles down low. He's a versatile player. 
That's why his team loves him so much. 6'4", senior, chance for a three-point play. Extend this lead up to six points. That might be one of the bigger leads for St. Francis tonight. Too. And he makes the three-point play happen. He converts on the free throw. Dingens with it. St. Francis running a three-man press. St. Francis is playing pretty aggressive on defense, stepping out way past the three points. That's how they like to play, up on defense, high tempo offense. Dinkins finds Turner in the corner, finds Batty's outside, pump fakes, takes it to the rim. Oh, and they call a charge. Batty's cannot believe it. He is so confused, and now Jared Turner is talking to the ref on the far side of the court. Those calls are so close. They are stacking up here. The now, difference between a block and a charge is close to nothing. Yeah, now these Eagles are actually at seven fouls, so I think St. Francis might be the bonus the rest of the way, if I'm correct. And Zagger playing a pretty heavy press. Lindsey shoots it, and he misses there to end the third quarter. A six-point differential going into the fourth quarter. What do you think St. Francis has to do to keep this lead? And what does Gonzaga have to do to come back and make it their game? Well, to keep this lead, the Panthers really just need to keep doing what they're doing. I mean, this change, I mean, looking at halftime, Gonzaga was actually ahead, I believe. And just in that third quarter, they changed the tide exclusively by playing more aggressive defense. And, you know, they double-teamed Dinkins. They double-teamed their ball handler in the corner. And that's led to a lot of mistakes on Gonzaga's end. In terms of the Eagles and what they can change, that needs to just be, you know, they were nailing three-point shots earlier in the game, especially Jared Turner. They didn't take many of them in the third quarter, and not something they should force it, but, you know, the issue they're having when they keep going down low and they kind of get these um, rejections at the, at the rim is because the player, San Francisco players know it's coming. So keeping them honest, making a couple three-point shots would be key as we go into this fourth quarter. I think Gonzaga definitely needs to attack from three-point land. For I think sure. that will be their biggest thing in the fourth quarter. Eight minutes remaining in this game. Yeah, still absolutely anyone's game. A six-point game, definitely a lot of time left. Exactly. Davis inbounding for St. Francis. Lindsay with it, Lewis on him, playing pretty aggressive defense. Turner stepping out. Johnson with it outside, finds Lindsay. Lindsay's trying to find some room to work with. Finds Carrington, pump fakes, goes right. Floater, he gets his own rebound, looks down low for a pass. Loose ball goes to Gonzaga. He passes that it. That is a high he IQ play passes by it, Thomas Batties. Passes it against Carrington, who is standing out of bounds. Super high IQ play. Gonzaga heaves the ball down. Pass. Great pass by Turner. Clark with it down low now, putting in work. I did not know that Jared Turner played quarterback. That was a phenomenal down court pass. He had the form and everything. Clark's going to have two at the line produced by Turner's down court pass. That's that's very good vision there that to see that to see that opening. Caleb Williams esque. Mm. Clark nails the first. The line for two. Jared talking to Batty's across the free throw line. Hey, get this rebound if he misses. Turner hits both, or Clark hits both, making it only a four point game. Carrington with it outside, going right down the baseline, passes it against Clark. It's going to stay with St. Francis, down low. Will be Lindsay inbounding below the basket. Turner on him. They find Carrington outside. Gonzaga students are trying to get to uh, get to the head of Carlton Carrington. Oh, and a steal. Devin Dinkins with the steal, pushing it in transition. Gets blocked at the rim. Loses the ball. Clark taking it now. Passes out to Lewis. Looking to Dinkins, reset here. Absolutely. They're going to try to reset and try to... Oh, Dinkins attacking the basket. 
Follows his own rebound and misses again. Davis. Johnson coming up with the ball. Had a hard time on that series. Davis pushing the pace now. Turner on him. He's stepping up. He's Davis near half court, waving around his players. Lindsay with it now. Tries to get down low to Johnson. Goes off Turner. Going to stay with St. Francis. One of the things that Jerry Turner does so well is helping on defense when he realizes that the, uh, the, his team is getting back down to the paint. Super good awareness. Lindsay's trying to get the ball down low. Oh, goes off of, off of Clark's off of hands. Clark's, Clark's hand. Going to stay with St. Francis. Davis attacks the basket. Good take. Oh, tries to finish with the left but misses. Gonzaga comes up with it. Dinkins with the ball at the perimeter. Going to look down low to Baddies. Going back to the basket. Oh! oh great move. Going what a right. no! Great move. Wow. Gonzaga student section likes that quite a bit. Oh, they're giving him a technical for it, though. But Coach Scherner loves it. He's telling his crowd to get into it. What a mean dunk. That was personal. And the technical free throw is good for Lindsay. Regardless of the call there on the technical, I think Gonzaga will take that in terms of the change in momentum that a play like that has. I suppose, although it's so crushing, you get it down to two points with that nasty dunk, and then you yell in his face, and now it's back to four points plus the ball. An off-ball foul on defense. Lewis there. They're in the bonus now. Lindsay again at the line here, trying to extend their lead. Six minutes left in the fourth quarter. The one and one misses, so he doesn't get a second free throw. Clark comes up with it. Batty's now with it after his exclamation point dunk. Great play there. Lewis with it outside. Clark now, back to Batty's down low. This is where he puts in the work. Goes right and finishes again. Batty's is on fire. He can't even believe himself. A great play there. Lamuth trying to get back momentum for St. Francis. And a foul called here. Turner. Turner is racking up these fouls slowly. Or should I say, I should say quickly, actually. <laughs> um, I don't know exactly what number that is, but Turner's gotten called for a few fouls now in the last couple minutes. Lamuth now at the line. Only a two-point game, but he'll have, he'll have two at the line here. Are they the double bonus now? I believe it's nine. Or, yeah, they definitely are. This is a really interesting game situation for the Eagles because all signs point to the fact that the momentum is on their side right now. Mm -hmm. But the fact that these kind of fouls off the ball, a little you know, careless, are giving St. Francis points. Lamuth nails both, bringing it 46-42. St. Francis is up. Having trouble inbounding it, Lewis gets it. Breaks the press there, has it on the right side of the court. Lewis with it, gives it up to Turner. Turner finds baddies near the top of the perimeter and a foul called off ball on Carrington. Looks like he reached over Clark's back Clark's right gonna there. be on the, at the line now. A lot of foul trouble for both teams with five minutes left in this game. Yeah, this is going to be a really interesting way to wind this game down, right? I mean, teams are going to, there are going to be a lot of free throws. It's going to come down to who's a better free throw shooter, as well as which team can penetrate the inside of the paint and get high percentage shots. The first free throw is good for Clark, bringing this within a one possession game. Clark, one of the greatest political science students we've ever seen. 
in <laughs> Mr. D's class. I think that's what he said. Yeah, that is. I, I hear that's a thing that goes around in that class. Making it a two-point game here. St. Francis is up. Lamuth with the ball, playing the point guard role. Lamuth setting up the offense. Attacking the basket. Oh, tough oh, finish. finishing with the left with contact. Great finish there by Lamuth. That's why he's one of their star players. Dinkins now attacking. Dinkins going to the basket, finishing with go. a right hand floater. Get he Devin on track. Him back. Lamuth now slowing down the pace, bringing up the ball. Turner playing defense on Lamuth. Clark switching on to him. Deep three there. Just off right. And Zaga comes up with the ball. Baddies gives it up to Lewis, one of their guards. So Gonzaga can tie or take the lead on this possession after being down as many as six. Only four minutes left in this game. Clark gives it up to Lewis. Lewis goes baseline, misses the layup. St. Francis comes up with the ball. Lindsay with it, attacking the basket. And a They're gonna call that a charge. charge. Baddies Look at Baddies. He energy is the play. fourth quarter energizer bunny. Absolutely. That dunk, that charge card there, these I are mean, going to be huge plays if, when you look over this game. If you're Coach Turner, you've got a squad full of seniors, and then you have Thomas Baddies, and you are feeling good about the future of Gonzaga basketball because tonight Baddies has shown up on a huge scale against the number 11 team in the country and is putting on a clinic. Absolutely. It's really it's impressive. He's hustling. He has really great athleticism on all far parts of the game, and you really just can't teach that. That's just something that it's intangible and that Baddies has. He's absolutely been the player of this quarter. He's been the player to watch, and he's going to be the player to watch the rest of this game. Oh, for sure. I mean, I don't doubt that it's going to go back to Turner, at least, and put the ball in his hands. I'm sure Dinkins will get some touches based off how, you know, dominant he is, especially in the clutch time. I know the team loves to go to him there. Um, and then there's a couple young guys, right? Nicholas Lewis, freshman, who got the start, is now on the court at the, you know, end of the game. There's as a lot as, of really key guys here. As far as St. Francis, Lemuth and Lindsay, I should say those are their two big names yeah. going into this End of this four, fourth quarter. And don't sleep on Daquan Davis. He's one of their top two guards right next to Lamuth. That program loves him, and they are not afraid to feed him the ball or those guys you just mentioned down at the wire. Turner's going to be inbounding the ball here. St. Francis playing a man press here. Can't find much, spa much space here. Turner back with it. Dinkins now. Gives them a little bit of space once Dinkins has the ball because of his handle. Unlikely to be turning the ball over during the press. Oh, open Corner, goal, pretty open. Not to take it. Baddies with it down low. Dinkins with it outside. Oh, makes a nice move. Oh! Brings the three. Great shot there. The crossover between oh! Lewis with the steal off the inbound. Lewis is unstoppable. Wow. That was a, a five-point swing there for Gonzaga. Oh, and the and block. And misses the layup. Robinson follows it. Loose ball on the ground in the paint. Robinson Again. staying with it. Turner ends up with the ball. Gonzaga's going to try to slow this down a little bit. Dinkins no, they won't. with it. <laughs> Push it, Devin. Dinkins attacking the basket. Gets oh men at the goodness. rim. What an exhilarating what a couple of minutes, a couple seconds there. Wow. Devin is catching his breath. Wow. The fans love it. A great crossover into a three-pointer created by Dinkins. Oh, and then instantly the after, bleachers. Lewis gets the steal off the inbound, finishes with the layup. What a great sequence for Gonzaga there, taking the lead 51-48. I mean... That is a testament to how great both these teams are. The down six points, not even a few minutes ago, Gonzaga can come back, go back and forth, and then be up by three in the matter of maybe 30 seconds. Incredible play on all ends of the Gonzaga team. I mean, from Devin to Jared, the whole, the whole roster is passing so well, playing such cohesive basketball. 
And then you look at that defensive sequence on the other side of the court. That might have been f like three or four blocks. The stat sheet is going to be like monstrous to look at at the end of this game um, in that department. And that is just such an impressive sequence by the Gonzaga basketball team. I think it just shows how much time is left, how much can happen in 30 seconds. And we have three minutes left in this oh, fourth quarter. Man, I can't imagine how it's going to turn. I'm sure Coach Turner is telling his team, hey, guys, keep it up. I don't know how you're going to do it again, but don't let off the gas pedal. And I'm sure Coach Miles on the other end of that, the Panthers, is like, hey, guys, let's regroup, get back to the de the defense that got us our six-point lead in the first place. Turner is now inbounding the ball for the Eagles. Gets it out to Baddies near the three-point line. Finds Clark down low, attacking the basket. Gets met at the rim. It's, it's staying with Gonzaga. Good defense there by Cortez Johnson for the Panthers. Going to find Dinkins, a deep pass Another for Turner again. Another pass. Dinkins bringing the ball up for them. Regrouping this offense. Dribbling with his left, finding Clark down low. It's a good pass. Out of bounds, right idea there. Yeah. You know, looks like Jared could be on the football team in Northeastern too. Maybe. Gonzaga is putting the pressure on on defense. With this press, oh, they're giving, up, they're letting up a little bit, allowing Carrington to bring up the ball. Lindsay with it outside, gives it to Johnson near the three-point line. Trying to find Lindsay inside, which he does. Lindsay regroups and goes to the corner. Look now brings Jared. it all the way out to half court. Turner following him the entire oh. time. Lindsay getting a little bit of space and then missing the three. Gonzaga comes up with it. And a foul called on Lamuth. Lamuth is claiming that Devin grabbed his shorts. Going both ways here. And I think this whole Gonzaga team, as well as the fans that are in the Carmody Center, can tell, can feel that this could be a big turning point in the last two minutes of this game. Dinkins now at the line. And the free throw falls. Gonzaga now up 52-48. And the second falls as well. Gonzaga student section is loving this. How could you not? This is phenomenal basketball. Lamuth with the ball outside. Goes right baseline. Goes up strong. Gets called on the foul. Baddies is there. Not happy with Turner's the call. Turner's trying to calm down. Baddies doesn't want to risk another technical foul. I think Baddies thought that it wasn't really too much contact there. Lamuth went up strong though, so yeah. you know, unsurprising he ends up at the line. If I'm St. Francis here, you've got to recognize the fact that Lamuth has been taken out of this game for the last couple minutes, the last quarter even, and that they need to get their star player back in to this rhythm. Lamuth nails both free throws, cutting the lead down to just three for Gonzaga with two minutes left in this quarter. Okay. Turner breaks the press with the pass to Lewis. A little bit of space there. Takes the free throw line jumper, misses. Might have been St. Francis there. comes up with it. Lamuth pushing the ball down the court, goes left. Ooh! And a blocking foul called there. Lamuth will be going to the line, trying to finish with the right there, but gets called, gets, draws the foul there. Lamuth again at the line. Playing a very physical game of basketball near the end of this quarter. The first one falls. The second free throw goes as well. Clark with the ball, gives it to Lewis. Lewis picks up his dribble. Oh, and he gets oh, stolen. Steal. Lamuth takes it himself and goes left again, getting the layup Love at it. the rim. Oh, and they're calling a foul on Davis. Number three, Davis. Dinkins will now be at she the line. He cannot believe it. Davis is not happy with that call. Dinkins will be at the line again. St. Francis now with the lead, 54-53. Oh, what a game. A minute 29 left in this 
game. Coming into tonight, both teams, on average, allowed their opponents 50 points a game. That average is probably going to stay the same after this game, although their offensive production is nowhere near what they normally are. This game has been dominated by hustling defense and relentless coverage. Dinkins ties it up with the first free throw at 54s now. And nails the second, taking the lead again. He's so clutch. Like you said before, the lead changes this game have been insane. Since the second quarter, it's been lead change after lead change. Lamuth takes it left, attacking the basket and finishing. That is the third time in the last three possessions that he's done almost the exact same play. Yeah, Lamuth is starting to take over this Panthers offense. He's made a couple trips to the free throw line recently, and now that bucket. Just over a minute left in this game. Dinkins with the ball trying to take back the lead for Gonzaga. Davis gets called the foul again. Wow, so that's going to be his fourth foul. That's Davis's fourth foul. I believe that in this game, five fouls will take you out. So he's got to watch himself over this last minute. And who knows, if this game goes to an extra period, that'll be a big issue. Dinkins nails the first, tying it up at 56. 58 seconds left in this game. Devin, Neither team so has any throws. fouls to give. And then takes the lead. Lamuth with the, in, with the inbound, bringing it up for St. Francis. Clark on him, playing pretty good pressure defense. Lamuth steps back. Go, uh, his three is just short. Lewis comes up with the rebound, gives it up to Dinkins. Dinkins getting double teamed. They're going to call a and timeout. A and a timeout by Coach Turner. Wow. So look at this. There's a 12 second, a 12 second differential difference between the play clock and the shot clock. So both teams, assuming that there's no offensive rebounds or anything like that, are each going to get one more shot at the ball. If I'm Gonzaga, if I'm Coach Turner, I'm telling my guys, hey, we're up by one. Let's try to get an easy bucket, a two if we can. And you know, if they get the ball back and they make a three, at worst we go to overtime, but let's hope that our perimeter defense steps up and stops them there. I don't think Coach Turner is going to look for any specific player on this play. I think he has a lot of trust in every single yeah, one of the players I mean, on the floor right now. I mean, Devin Dinkins has stepped it up in this last three minutes. I mean, you know, Nicholas Lewis, uh, Thomas Baddies, Jared Turner have all been on all night. And Quinn Clark is a reliable option in the post. So, I mean, you're not really going to go wrong anywhere. If I were to guess, I'm thinking that he chooses to try to dish it off to Devin for a pick play, see if there's an open jumper, and if not, down low to Baddies. And in St. Francis' last possession, I would be highly surprised if Lamuth is not the man with the ball. I'd agree. A very exciting game. A one-point game with 35 seconds left. Turner is there to inbound, gives it up to Dinkins. Dinkins handling the ball, looking to take his time on this possession to drain out this clock. Lewis falls off the handoff. Dinkins with it. Got to get a shot off here. Trying to create something. Gets to the back to himself. Ball's on the ground. It's going to be a shot clock wow. violation. Ball does not hit the rim. Devin Dinkins was hoping for a foul, didn't get one, and now, wow, and now St. Francis is going to have a, a chance to win this game. one-point game. 12, 12 seconds. seconds left. A oh one-point game. Lamuth with the ball. Any bucket gets them the win. Oh, oh a, charge. Charge. a charge! A charge! They get... The offensive foul. Wow. Baddies gets his, I believe, his third charge card of the game. Oh, the crowd is in, is, 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 I mean, what I am right now. They're shocked. So there's three seconds left. Oh, people are on the court. Wow. There's a timeout now. Coach Nicholas Miles is in disbelief. Wow. He is being held back because he cannot believe that his players got called for a charge. Game on the line. 
the, that was the exact play I expected to happen. You called I it. I did not see. <laughs> I did not see a charge. A charge <laughs> happening on this last possession. This is like the story of the game, though, right? The Gonzaga team makes the hustle plays when they need to, and that's what's kept a minute and put them ahead now with three seconds left. They really need to hold the ball, not make a turnover, and make their free throws, and that's going to win them this game. Batty's putting his body on the line there. Gonzaga now has the ball with the lead. Three seconds left in this fourth quarter. I assume San Francis is going to go for the immediate steal or foul. Yeah, I mean, I guess three if, seconds if, left. If, if, if you're St. Francis, even you could consider, and if I were St. Francis, what I would do, an off the ball foul before it's even inbounded, put them straight to the line, force them to make their free throws. No time goes off the clock. And hey, if they make both, okay, but you get a chance for a three. We'll see what happens here. Coach Turner and his players are talking it over right now with the timeout coming to an end. Less than three seconds Looks remaining like, in this uh, game. Carrington just looked. Carrington actually just went and took a look at the whiteboard that Gonzaga was drawing on, trying to tell his players, St. Francis players, where they should line up. And it looks like he actually got a glimpse at it because he's telling them where to go. I kind of like the strategy there. It's, I mean, it's, yeah, it's what, what it takes. Got to do what you got to do. Yeah. Turner to inbound. Lewis with the ball. Immediately fouled by Davis. Let's see how much time comes off the clock here. Point, point seven, seven now. Point seven on the game clock. Lewis at the line with the lead. Well, so here's what I, I mean, if you're Gonzaga, why not miss the free throw? Because if you make both. It will be two free throws regardless. I mean, I missed this. Yeah, I mean, go for the first one. But I'm saying if you miss the second one, they've got to collect the rebound and then chuck it up court basically off the catch. If you let them inbound, if they have a chance to catch lining themselves up a little bit and get a better shot. I absolutely agree, but Lewis has to make sure on the second he at least hits the rim so sure. the game clock of course. starts and the ball's in play. Otherwise, St. Francis would get the ball with an inbound. Looks like Jared and Turner and uh, Carlton Carrington are having some words. Lewis nailing the first free throw, extending the lead to two. Gonzaga up 58-56. And Lewis makes a second, making it a three-point game. They inbound it. Deep shot. It was no good. Gonzaga celebrating. Wow, what a game. So that'll be it a phenomenal showdown in the Comedy Center. And what other way would you expect the DC Classic to conclude, Drew? It was the perfect ending. The was, perfect ending. Absolutely. Well, that is all for this game at the Comedy Center, where the final score is 59-56 to 56 in favor of the Gonzaga Eagles coming out on top. I'm John Ferrara, and on behalf of the DC Classic broadcast, we thank you for joining us this evening. We also want to give a big shout-out to the Gonzaga Fathers Club and all of our sponsors for helping put on this phenomenal event. To recap the weekend, we saw you know, phenomenal action on both Friday, Saturday, and Sunday with nail biters on each day, and ultimately Gonzaga coming out on top against St. Francis in this phenomenal championship. We can't wait for what's in store next year, and we want to make sure that we pass it off to our award ceremony that you will see shortly on this YouTube live stream. Thank you for joining us. I'm John Farrar, and this is Drew Winters.
John McLaughlin and Mike Logan. Our first award is the second place team trophy, recognizing both the spirited play and sportsmanship this year. Second place team trophy goes to the St. Francis Academy Henders, coached by Nicholas Miles. Our next presentations are the individual player and coaching awards given this year's championship team as a perimeter of your spirited play and sportsmanship in remembrance of this special occasion. As we call your name, we ask you to please come to center four and be recognized. Number one, Derek Dixon. Number two, Justin Gilmore. Number five, Nicholas Lewis. Number ten, Bryson Ford. Number eight, again, Jack Payton. Number fifteen, Thomas Batiste.
And from Gonzaga, number 15, Thomas Batiste. We want to again thank this year's tournament sponsors for their generous support. 